All right, then. Let's turn up Winners the volume. Winners don't do drugs. <laughs> I'm a short guy, you see. <laughs> Lag, stop! No! Yeah, it's happening on my end, too. Yeah, I see it in the yeah. back as well. Damn it! It's playing normally. Get God, the song. Just a God, lot so of... 80s. Oh, yeah, no, that's, that's one of the other things I love about the uh, TMNT, or at least by just the 80s series. It just, it uses the right amount of cheese. I mean, I mean, it literally feels, I mean, it just screams, oh, look, this is the 80s. Yep. Well, this was 91, and the thing was, like, because going into the 90s, like, the, the popularity was kind of dying down a little bit. We had the red sky. The song, that freaking song, along with oh, other God. freaking music yeah, okay. that they would play. Oh. Okay, who's who's not in? Uh, whoever it uh, might be. You, there we I go. Think. Okay, so I have to remember yeah. I'm Michelangelo. I've been so used to playing Leonardo, so it's like, oh crap, I'm not the blue one, I'm the orange Donnie! one. Donnie! <laughs> I am still Raph. Um, but no, like, so. I remember the whole thing of... <laughs> oh, Blue like, Griffin! One of the la uh, like, hold, guys, one of the last on. big... Acharki, oh. hold on a second. Blue Griffin, you actually overcounted. <laughs> He tried to make a 69 joke, but apparently it came to a total of 70. That's uh, <laughs> This, folks, is what you call getting cock blocked. Oh. Hi also, were you going to say, uh, Nergi? Yeah, go ahead, Sharky. So, that's the song for the intro to this game. It was oh, part of yeah, something no. called the, Tur the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles in a band. No! It was the, we don't talk the about that. The, the coming. Oh. No, I will talk oh, coming about coming out of their shells band. band. Yeah, oh. the coming out of their shells tour. The coming out of the oh. shells tour. Oh. I had that tape. Oh. That sounds like Sonic Underground. It's terrible. Yeah. It's like, I still awful. remember. It I still remember the nostalgia critic and an AVGN review of it. Yeah. I oh, also my. I do remember that the nostalgia critic made a cameo appearance from the honest trailers of the live action team of T movies. And oh, like, yeah. You want to see something more tearing apart? No. Are you moving with some more of this? No. Well, too bad. I'm gonna show it to you anyway. And it's just like, oh god, please stop. Uh, I don't know if it, I don't know which honest trailer it was. Um, all I know is that that was a moment that happened, and it's it's like it will never leave your fucking head. Did you see that scene where they were interviewed by Oprah? No. That was a thing. I remember that. that was the, the, oh these guys gosh. in suits dressed as the Turtles and Splinter were interviewed by Oprah. Ow! In, in, I mean, it kind of reminds me of this one sh I, I forgot what the name of this show was. It was a show from the 80s. It was like oh, Oprah. Shit. And it featured him and it featured him literally interviewing Watch out for that. Jason Voorhees. Okay, so I know exactly what you're talking about. That was from the Arsenio Hall show. Yeah, that was the one. When they had, they were promoting uh, Friday the Thirteenth Part Eight, and, and oh, hey, Jason, yeah, stuff, and he man. has Jason Voorhees come out, which, uh, according to many fans of Friday the Thirteenth, probably the best thing to come out of that whole movie because the movie itself is not regarded Bullet well. Him. <laughs> Bullet him. I know, right? Wait, is the that whole the thing. One was that the one where Jason Voorhees was going through Manhattan? Yes. That one was just a big mindfuck. Like, that defeats the purpose of, like, a slasher horror. Because you're out in public, yeah. viewed by everybody. So if you try to kill somebody, it's it's not going to have any, like... Because one of the scary things about slasher horror, or any horror, is if you're alone and you're facing with some kind of threatening thing. It, the, the, yeah, because, like, the biggest thing of that movie, though, was, like... They were, you know, advertising and kind of hyping up the fact, like, oh, he's in New York. But he's not really there until, like, the last third of the movie. 
Because most of the movie takes place on this cruise boat. Shit. And yeah. Ass for some so someone who like is very into horror and I, and I own every there single we go, movie boys. in that franchise, I can agree. Boy, I hate that movie. With the yeah, I, mean, in, I hate I, it. I, I mean, the old, I mean, <laughs> I mean, let's be real. The only good thing about that movie is the mm -hmm. scene where Jason kicks the boombox and scares the punks. Yeah. There we go. Yeah. That's the only good thing from it. Just seeing the punks threaten a big hulking man that is wet with a with a hockey mask on, and they're like, "Oh god, I'm pissed off. I'm about to stab him." And all he does is just turn around, show him his face, and they me like, "No, it's cool. It's cool. It's cool." <laughs> yeah, the, the Arsenio Hall interview. Like Jason just sits there, does not say a word. But there's a few times where I could swear. The actor was probably trying to keep from laughing. <laughs> it was good. <laughs> uh, Kane Hodder, who was the, the the guy in the as Jason at the time, like oh wow, oh god bless oh, him. Oh, yeah. son of a bitch! Watch out for that. Because I know he also played Jason as well in um, Freddy yeah. vs. Jason. Yeah, no, he did, he did not. Um, no, Kane Hodder was not in that movie, and oh, which was shit. which stunk because. Kane Hodder was one of the people that was kind of campaigning for that to happen. And then when what? it finally did, they didn't cast him because the reasoning being was his height. They wanted Jason Voorhees to be someone that stood taller than Freddy, which was not the case with Kane, with Hodder, so they cast oh, him with someone else. I, I know, I know, but that was the explanation for it. That is so bullshit! They Put the man in high heels. They could, they could have just put him in bigger boots. <laughs> Eat so, my nunchucks. Ugh. As a little bit of a subject change for like, a so a question for everybody here, maybe for those in the chat too. If you had any action figures from any whatever series of turtles, whatever, did you have a favorite action turtles figure or like you know character, what have you? Like, uh, I remember is... having like one or two turtle. Uh, toys when I was like a younger than five. I, think. I unfortunately never had right any of them, but, the I, the turtles, but I do I remember seeing them. them. It, is my mic I, cutting out? No. no, no, you're good. Okay. I don't think watch I out for the exploding pizza. I mean, as for Eat me, like, as for me, oh, like, short, I, I had Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtle toys as a kid, and, and that's just mainly because my dad raised me in the to be like playing. Like video games and all that on a regular basis when I was younger, mm -hmm. and I owned them. But Guys, over, the pizza. Like, over the years, when he Chris, moved, up here. When he moved yeah. places, up here. he lost them. I was so oh, upset. Right. Oh. I, I pizza. There's one more pizza. Yeah, somebody else go get them. Okay, one of them I'm just good. died. I have okay, seven lives. I'm good. All right, who's the Riza. third player? That's Riza. Okay, yeah, I don't, I don't remember what I had. I, I remember I had like a okay, bunch of them, like, pretty good right now. different versions of them. Oh, it's uh, Here was my metalhead. favorite metalhead. toy as a kid. Huh? I had a metalhead figure, and he was my fucking favorite. I Aww. He was probably the coolest looking turtle figure. I know, right? He had like the... He had like the shiny exterior, Shit. which Got was me. fucking great. And he had this thing, which was like... This red plastic like light tunnel. Where am I? So it's like you know you put. Yeah, you gotta attack this guy the right way because he he's got that electrical shock thing to him too. Ah, I keep forgetting who Not... I am. Also, <laughs> um, in regards to the TV use your movie, weapons. Don't try and get too close to him. Also, in regards to shock will get you. In regards to Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, there is one thing I do remember from the cartoon. Even I didn't watch it. I. Still remember it mainly because everyone always mentions it. Uncle Brian Phil Ruffin. voicing Shredder. Yeah. Really? Yeah, Uncle Phil of Fresh Prince of Bel Air voiced Shredder. I just yep. want to yeah, hold up the conversation for a second and say that is actually the most appropriate time that a character actually explodes because of machinery compared to just everybody else is exploding. Oh, yeah. great! <laughs> this level! Oh, oh no. <laughs> Wait, Golden Bunga, Bunga, dude! Oh, watch, Yuka. Uh, watch out for the landmines. You were saying? I was like, what was that on the loading screen? Was that a xenomorph? What the? It looked like a. Oh, yeah. It's a was replica. A okay, so people keep forgetting that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles was first a comic book to satirize the Silver Age of comic books. 
Yeah. Oh yeah, the I Super remember Gun that. Yeah. Silver Age, and, like the Alan Moore era, like or like really dark, gritty. Like, Bat- Mark Knight Returns, Batman era. Like the comics, reason you know? the reason you have the Foot Clan is because they were a parody of Marvel's The Hand. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> which fewer people know of. I did not know that actually. Oh, Man, I did not know that either. Well, also, then the more you know. Also, in regards to T- TMNT being basically a parody of Alan too. Moore type of writing, that actually makes me happy because even though I respect Alan Moore, he's not I can't assistant. stand the guy. He's so far up his own ass with constantly decrying comic books these days, oh. even though he still writes comic books. And the fact that the fan base holds him in so much high regard that every single time DC does anything with Watchmen, their response is, I need to complain angrily about it because you're touching it! Folks, this is what you call hypocrisy. I keep <laughs> hitting the fucking minds. I mean, to be... Yeah, I don't even I mean, see them most of the time. Yeah, you barely to, have a second to react. I mean, to give them credit, Alan Moore was unfairly treated by DC. But at the same time, Alan Moore's constant... Come, superheroes suck. Superheroes are not that good these and days. And yet, you write Watchmen, and you continue writing comics. The, yeah. the, the thing to me is, like, I won't begrudge anybody who wants to shit on Marvel and DC, because... Everybody's yeah, they can got an suck. Opinion. It's just, yeah, they do. He has this, like, this... I can't even jump. Why won't you let me jump? He has his opinions, definitely, and I can understand that. But it's the thing with, like, you want to say comics in general, like, as a medium, are bad, then it's like, ouch, you couldn't be more wrong. Like, I mean, he goes, I mean, he basically believes that comic books these days are, we are boss child, rush? Well, not a boss rush, are but yeah, rush. childish. Oh, God, ton of these things. Yeah. <gasps> Which, again, the ironic thing is that he wrote one of the best Superman stories. Yep. Mm. Um, it ah. was, um... All-Star Superman? Was... No, not All-Star Superman. He okay. wrote... Um, I think he ended up writing... Um, whatever happened... No, wait, I think that was... Um, whatever happened to the Man of Tomorrow? I think ah. it was that one, as well as for the Man Who Has Everything. Uh, oh, the Man Who Has Everything is oh, a yeah. good one. You know, the one where Superman finds himself in a... What if Krypton never exploded yes. and he lived on Krypton? With oh, God, then there wouldn't be a that story! Episode. There wouldn't be a um, Superman. Like, there wouldn't be a movie, or there wouldn't be a... Well, no, no, well, the I thing, out no, of no, you see, Golden, the thing about that story, uh, and what made it so beloved, is because it shows the one thing Clark, wa- like, Clark, a.k.a. Superman, also wants. He just wants a, he just wants a normal life. He wants a family. And that's what made the story really damn good. And it makes it worse when you realize, oh, wait, he's trapped in this... I guess you could say simulation, because one villain wants to kill him. Yeah. Oh, great. We're back at the Jurassic period. I love the swing guys, like, thud back and forth, back and forth. Uh, wait. Splinter, why don't you help them? Guys, hold on a second. What's going on, Sorry. Is whoever is playing Donnie not there, or? Ryza? Ryza, you there? Ryza, buddy? Ryza. Oh, jeez! I think his internet may have crashed. Oh, Uh-oh. crap. Alright, we're gonna have to hold ourselves off. Rise up! Uh, I hope we don't get bombed again. Rise up! Yeah, I think his internet Ryza. may have crashed. Yeah, I think his internet may have crashed. It's only taking a while to catch up to him. Um, um, okay. I love how Splinter keeps getting bigger. Splinter is punishing <laughs> us. Ryza, where are you? I had to get my food out. I told you. You let us oh, get yeah, bombed so many times. times. It would bomb us if you oh, left it right, right. too long. <laughs> I mean, at least Wait, you got back what? quickly. They were killing everybody. It's Aww. okay. All right. So to be fair, that's I think that's a mechanic that was there, so that way nobody would try to get a free play. If somebody, yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> no, like arcade ports back then were brutal. Like they even had some like cheap tactics to make you use your quarters more. So we oh, got yeah. uh, like oh, this motherfucker. Okay, I it, 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 that in the Mortal Kombat arcade as well. Oh yeah, absolutely. Like the the fucking game could read your inputs. Yeah, and I still remember, um, like you know, it's the same era when like 
console games were purposely made difficult because nobody wanted you to beat it in a rental. Yeah, no, it's a, like it's a similar thing like NES games because they had such a low memory to uh, run um, a good number yeah. of levels. They had to make it hard to make sure that because if somebody just beat the game immediately, it wouldn't have much value worth your purchase. Yeah. Eat shit! Suck on my nunchucks! <laughs> okay, that came out bad. That's off. I'm sorry. <laughs> Your nunchucks! <laughs> I'm not what? Your nutchucks. They're nut. <laughs> <laughs> if they're oh, not yeah, your they're chucks, who are they? <laughs> you know, I'm. S you're, you're lucky I'm Michelangelo instead of Raph. Because I imagine that his like his like neutral pose would be just like him oh, laughing, no. like something much anger. Whereas Michelangelo is just sitting there ruffling. <laughs> I refuse to stay past go under sixty nine lives.